Well, welcome. We are at the top of the hour, so we are going to go ahead and get started today. Thank you again for joining us. Um, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and find that Q&A feature in your Zoom controls. Um, that's where you'll be able to ask questions of our panelists as we're going through our presentation today. We have some folks behind the scenes who are ready to answer those questions. Um, but I am going to um, kind of toss it over to my co-host today, Jessica Moore, and let her do some introductions. Yeah. So welcome guys. Today we're talking about next level generosity. I know that you guys uh, hopefully went to the registration page and got the information you needed to know what we're going to talk about today. But bottom line, we're just here to try to make sure you understand all of the amazing features that you have access to or could have access to so that you can communicate your impact really well. So um, I am Jessica Moore. I have been with Ministry Rands for five years and I've worn a handful of hats, but currently I am on our enablement team and education team, um, helping mostly with our internal teams uh, to know what features we're releasing, how those will work, how those can benefit our clients. Um, and then sometimes I get the chance to talk with our customers as well, which is my favorite thing to do actually. So um, that is a little bit about me and then Leanne, yeah, so I have also been with Ministry of Brands for about five years, wearing a few different hats. I'm currently sitting in a seat where I get to lead a team of individuals who are working on our help articles and education materials as well, um, trying to make sure that we're delivering content that helps you guys know how to best utilize the platforms and products that you have with ministry brands um, to free up your time to do other things that are more people related because we know that's why you're in um, the ministries that you're in. So it's excited to be able to share today about this uh, new feature. So let's jump in. What is impact? Jessica, when we're talking about impact, what is it that we are, um, what why are we using that word? Yeah. So I actually just pulled the dictionary definition and I kind of loved what this said. I just needed a launching point. So I wanted to look at that. Um, and it's to have a strong effect on someone or something. So as a, as a ministry, what is your mission? Who and what are you affecting most in your immediate interaction? Um, and then that impact, whatever that impact is, it is meant to inspire engagement, whether that's financial engagement or volunteer engagement, you essentially want to know what are you doing, who are you doing it for, and then how to communicate that well in a way that inspires more people to join your mission, right? And so ultimately our mission is to bring people to Jesus, right? That's the number one mission. Um, but how are you doing that in your church in your community. Um, and that is your impact. I love that bold statement that your impact inspires. I think sometimes it can be difficult depending on sizes of ministries. You might think, well, I don't have giant numbers to share, but I want to encourage every administrator on this call, every pastor, every church secretary, that regardless of what you think your size is, you are making an impact and that impact um, is inspirational and you have a story to tell. And we wanna talk about how you can share that. But we wanna talk about why, why is that an important thing to do? Um, Jess, we have some great stats here that if you wanna start kind of sharing about. Sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we, we're going to highlight ways that you can do some of these. We're not going to cover all of them, but this um, graphic, these statistics were actually pulled of out of something called the state of giving report that our incredible marketing team has pulled together. So this is real data from real churches that we have compiled into the state of giving report for 2024. It is a very powerful resource. I highly recommend that you download it if you haven't already. Um, possibly if someone, I, we didn't request this in advance, but if someone has access to that and can drop that link in the chat or the q and I don't know if we re-enabled chat, but if we can do that, that'd be great so that we can drop some links in there. Um, otherwise, we will give it to you in the follow-up resources promise. We'll give you an option to download this. But the very first thing on here is showing transparency on how your church spends money. And this feels taboo. <laughs> Doesn't feel like historically what churches feel comfortable doing, but 
based on the numbers, y'all, this is the number one way that churches increased generosity over the last year. 57% even. So this is obviously really important. It is. So Jess, what do we say then to the church though that says, ooh, um, but what if I don't feel like that tells a great story because we're we're doing all we can to keep the lights on? How mm-hmm. how how does that how do we help overcome that? Mm. Well, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I would argue that honestly, I would argue that even that transparency can speak volumes. I, I, I think that, you know, if I would hope that as a church leader, you are not operating in a vacuum by yourself. Um, I would hope that there is, you know, other team members that you have, or even just confidants or mentors, preferably that you can go to and say, Hey, this is where we're at. And, uh, if your congregation isn't even aware that that's where your church is at, then they're the expectation that they will help um, is unrealistic. I think, I think communicating your church needs is really important. It's I'd say critical to the life of your church. Um, So, you know, we'll talk about this a little bit later in our presentation, but uh, people are still giving, even though we have a recession that we're working through. Um, But yeah, we, people are still giving and they're still giving to the church. Um, you know, worship or church or ministries is something that people still prioritize even in their giving. So, um, this is, this is why we're communicating about impact and the importance of you communicating that to your congregation, uh, so that if they're going to continue giving, they know where to give and what that will do. Yeah. And just, I think you hit the nail on the head is that if they don't know, then they they um, may just think everything's okay. So that honesty and that transparency is key for our givers. And I think that this statistic of all of those surveyed, the fact that 75% of churches had transparent communication about their finances with their congregation um, through these different areas, I think that speaks volumes to uh, maybe a shift in how we're approaching our transparency. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. Um, I think to the ability to share, well, and this, this is just a random thought I had, but I, I think the ability to share those things now, you know, there's some things that you feel comfortable sharing face to face with people. And there's some things that are a little harder to share face to face with people. And so the, the option that we have to communicate digitally, which is one of the big focuses that we have today, um, either through email or, I mean, you could always send snail mail. That's very powerful still. But if, if you don't feel comfortable standing up in front of your congregation and saying, this is where we're at, we do, we're going to talk through options of other ways to communicate that information digitally um, that will allow you to invite people into improving your situation without, um, having to awkwardly stand there in front of them and say in person, because that might be, you know, the most uncomfortable part for you. I don't know. I have no idea. It wasn't part of what we were going to discuss today, but it, it did cross my mind that that might not be something you feel comfortable talking about with in person. So digitally is a way to go for sure. Absolutely. And I, th- I hope you guys have taken some time to read those bullet points that are on the screen about ma- making sure we're showing how the church spends income from donation, highlighting ministries that the church impacts, whether it's the ministry of the church or other um, ministries that are in your community, um, providing those updates and oh, expressing gratitude, saying thank you to your givers and how powerful that really is. Um, so Another reason why this is so important, how many people are asking for donations? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of noise in the charitable giving space now. Um, You know, we have some recent research um, that um, was really interesting to me about um, how people view this idea of tithe and offering. Just talk to us a little bit about what we've been learning from this. Yeah, this is surprising to me too, because growing up in church, I, I had my own thoughts. I fall into one of these buckets, (laughs) Um, but yeah, interestingly enough, most people still think that tithing, when you tithe, it's going to your church, Uh, but there are definitely other opinions, right? So some people say that Christian, that you can give to a Christian ministry. So 
Okay. And then other people are saying that you can give to an individual in need churches. They don't even attend regularly. And then even a secular charity. So wherever you fall within this bucket, great. What we're encouraging you to do is to consider spreading your impact. You know, the communication of your impact that is going to inspire generosity when you're communicating that keep these numbers in mind, keep in mind that you are not uh, only trying to capture generosity within the four walls of your congregation. This is, this is outside of that. And according to these numbers, you may receive generosity from people that don't even attend your church or, um, yeah. And so even if they don't align with helping you keep your lights on, right, that's not going to be the only impact that we're talking about and the inspiration that we're talking about. But as you talk about ministries, maybe that you partner with ministry or missionary, excuse me, organizations that you partner with, how you communicate the impact of those gifts can inspire people to give outside of your four walls. So definitely keep these numbers in mind. You're talking outside of just your congregation here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we want to remember that there are many different givers. So providing different methods Mm -hmm. um, is the word we use here is imperative. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I think about next generation givers. I want to be sure that the next generation can find the joy in giving that I have found. Um, And so making sure that they can give. And I can tell you, some folks in my extended family who are younger, they don't own a checkbook. They couldn't whip that out um, and write a check to an organization. Um, And so I want to be sure that if I'm wanting to engage them in generosity, that we can engage them where they are. hundred percent. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you eliminate cash and check. I think fantastic. And for you as a ministry, that is absolutely the most beneficial, right? That's, there is no, you, you get to use every single cent of those gifts. So we're not telling you not to accept those, but you would be at a loss if you did not at least offer digital generosity. Obviously you're all here because you already do offer digital generosity, but even outside of text giving and online giving, and we'll talk about some other options, but why not offer all of those methods of giving, especially if you can do so in an automated way uh, through our giving platform. You do have the option to facilitate giving um, across multiple payment methods. So take advantage of that. Now, I just want to celebrate. We had somebody that just shared in the Q&A that 55% of their um, offerings are actually now coming through digital. Um, That's fantastic. I love that. Yeah, I love it too. And there's so many benefits to it aside from just allowing your um, congregants or donors additional ways to give and just the ease and convenience of it. But recurring giving is a huge benefit, right? Just the consistency there. Um, And then automating all of the things that we said on the last screen. So definitely huge benefits to to digital giving. Um, Peter, that's awesome. We celebrate that with you for sure. Yeah. All right. So we've talked a little bit about, you know, why it's important to share your impact. You're doing good work. Um, It's you're able to share your financial transparency with the ministry that you're doing. So how do we be strategic about communicating impact? And we have this little framework and I'm going to tell you that we are actually going to send you a worksheet after this um, presentation where you'll be able to walk through this. But I just want to talk through a little bit about, you know, if you've never kind of framed what is your impact you're making or what is the vision that you're casting, um, a couple of quick steps. Just tell us a little bit about um, some of these steps. Yeah. And real quick, back to the comment that I made at the very beginning, even if your church or ministry is very small and you are a one person show, I would highly encourage you to sit down with someone who knows your heart to help sort through these details and clarify exactly what it is that you're trying to do, accomplish, and then communicate. Um, so obviously you're going to describe your what the, and y'all, these are, these are pretty basic. This is how we help our kids walk through what they're trying to tell us as they're learning how to speak. But it's a good reminder for us to break it down. And then as you're writing these things down, they are exactly what it says here. It is a framework and it allows you to lean into some parts 
uh, you know, more than others, depending on what stage of the campaign that you're in or what method of communication you're using at that time. So, um, so you're going to describe your what, um, and I guess, I mean, I guess I could read this. Okay. So describe your, what, what do you want to accomplish and address the need? And in the framework, I believe if it's the framework that I saw, Leanne, there are examples too. Yes. Like, so that will, that'll help a little bit too, give some clarity on exactly what, but you're going to describe your, what, then you're going to describe your, how, so what do we need money for? What are we trying to raise a dollar amount is preferable. How are we going to do that? Um, and then this is a great place to include, you know, specific links, or if you've got a QR code leading them to a, a giving form or a landing page or a link to your website where you're talking about your mission and all of this is outlined there too. Um, when are you going to like, when are, when is your deadline? When is this campaign starting? Um, articulate the need again. These are, these are core beliefs addressed. Like this is where you tap into the emotional connection points that make people want to be generous with the specific thing that you're trying to raise money for. Describe the why, why are we wanting to accomplish this goal? And then identify the who. People are important. We connect with people. So even if it's just, we need to keep the lights on at the church, why do we need to keep the lights on at the church? Because we're trying to impact our community. Who in our community are we trying to impact? Why do those people matter? Why do they matter to Christ? And how can we meet them where they're at? So that's kind of a very loose way to break it all down. Um, but yeah, I mean, anything you want to add, Leanne? So I just, I just want to push into a phrase that you used. You were talking, you kind of um, equated this to helping our kids learn how to speak. Um, some of us are learning how to speak vision and impact. Mm -hmm. And this is really how we begin to speak those things um, and how we begin to learn how to articulate that. So I love that. So hopefully if you're here on this call that some of you may be very fluent in impact speaking. Um, other, others of us may be learning our ABCs of impact. Um, so hopefully you can take these tools and this framework and really begin to decide how you're going to craft that message um, and use it consistently um, and share it across your audience. So we're thinking about who is our audience and it is broad. And I think Jess kind of hit on this earlier. It's not just the folks who are showing up every Sunday. Yes, they are your audience, your folks who have set up a recurring gift and give consistently. Yes, they're your audience, but it's bigger than that. So just talk to us a little bit about that net that we're casting. Yeah, I think a couple important call outs. Um, and we did, we've done generosity webinars a number of times. Sure. Um, you can find all of those on our, on our ministry brands website. There's a lot of good stuff on there. Um, if you are not talking about generosity, even with just ties and offerings on a normal level outside of special campaigns, outside of special events, fundraisers, whatever, if you're not already talking about the opportunity for people to give on a regular basis, I would argue reminding them of the opportunity every single Sunday, um, you need to do that because that's your primary audience. And if you have built a culture of generosity at your church, this is another recurring topic that we have revisited here with our webinars. Check them out. They're great. Oh, and Austin just put the webinar page in the chat. So save that for later. But um, if you have not built a culture of generosity at your church, it may be uncomfortable to talk about this. It may be uncomfortable to talk about your vision and your impact. Um, the goal is to create a culture of generosity at your church. And you do that by reminding people why they should give, why it's important biblically, the opportunity that it presents to them. Leanne said she's got, you know, a good, a great giving experience, a great giving story journey. My husband and I have uh, an incredible, God was so faithful in, in, his, his generosity to us through obedience. It, it's important. You're robbing your congregation of an opportunity for blessing. Um, if you're not talking about generosity regularly, okay, that soapbox aside, specifically talking about your impact and your mission for envision for 
specific campaigns or whatever. You have your live audience, and that's your folks that are obviously sitting in services on Sunday morning. Then you've got events. If you're doing special events, missionary families coming into town, we're raising funds for them. We're doing a dinner. They're going to talk about their time in whatever country they're in or if they're local. And that's a special event, right? Then you've got fundraisers outside of that. So if you're doing a popsicle Sunday, it's still freezing here in Tulsa, but if you're doing a popsicle Sunday this summer and you're raising money for, you know, kids ministry, then that's a fundraiser. You've got a live audience there. I mean, popsicle fundraiser is going to be a rough one, but you know what I'm trying to say? You've got live event. That's a targeted audience. They're there. They understand they're there for fundraising. You've got them. Then you've got your digital audience. You've got your website, email newsletters, and social media. The message should be the same across all of these audiences. What you can do is tweak your approach depending on who you're speaking to. And then obviously the delivery method is going to be different, right? As you're sending, uh, you, what you post to social media is obviously going to be slightly different than what you say in your in-person services. However, it should all circle back to your vision um, and impact time for, or my gosh, what is it? Framework. Yes. Framework. Framework. I was saying time frame. That's not right. Um, so make sure that all ties back together. And once that's set, it will feel very comfortable to say, okay, this is what we're sharing here. And we've already said this a bunch of times. Can we focus more on this part of it? But as long as it all ties back to your framework, then um, that should be fairly easy to do and tweak. Absolutely. I want to um, call out a couple of things that you said there, Jess. Um, bold statement, but it's so true that if we are not creating a culture of generosity, that we're robbing our givers of an opportunity to um, to participate. Uh, and that, you know, my husband and I are in ministry. And so there have been moments um, where um, in the middle of service, it became offertory time. And I saw people scrambling. And then I realized that we had not put up um, our digital giving slide. And they didn't have a way to participate. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of them actually like walked over to me and was like, hey, can we even give digitally? And so I had to like try to tell them our website. Um, but if they hadn't been willing to step over, they may have missed that opportunity. And it was because we just hadn't thought about it. And I'm like, I work in this. And how did my church not have that up there? Um, so it's sometimes it's simple things to do like that. Um, the other thing that I want to, to press in on is, wow, that we have the same message regardless of our audience, that we are being consistent in what we're sharing. And so that is incredibly important as um, you're sharing your vision, that it's consistent and they can be found over and over again. Um, hearing things multiple times is not going to be um, harmful to your donors or givers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love All that. right. So if we talk about then how do we use the tool that you guys have, we're going to highlight a couple of different um, features within the Ministry Brands Giving Solution of how you can share impact. And so the newest feature is actually called Impact Reports. Just tell us a little bit about an the impact report. Like, what is this? Where is it? What, what are we seeing here? Yeah, yeah. So we have had... Uh, pretty robust giving forms for a while with the opportunity to customize those. Um, but what we were finding is that with the, with the churches and the, the customers that were taking advantage of this feature is they were including lots of information before the ability to actually give. Okay. So people would come to their giving form and there just was a lot of words and that's fine. We, we want to communicate our, our vision and our mission. However, um, it was sometimes reducing, uh, or creating a little bit more friction for donors. They were, you know, scrolling up all the way or feeling like they needed to read before they could give. And so, uh, it was making that experience a little bit less fluid and so we instead, our, our development team created this impact report. So what this is, is it's a feature that you can add to your forms. You'll, you'll go to your fund creation and I'm going to get a little bit technical. Uh, actually, we'll get technical on the next slide because that's what we're going to talk about. We'll show you how to do it. Um, but essentially what this is, 
high level overview. It gives you an, an, op an opportunity to cast vision. You can story tell with visual elements, right? You can see on these little um, screenshots that we've provided here that you can add an image. You even have a progress bar option depending on the functionality you're using within our platform. Um, and then you can express financial transparency if you want. We've got those little pie charts on the second screenshot there at the bottom of the impact report. And then obviously you can immediately express gratitude. You can thank your folks right there on the impact report, right on the giving form uh, in a way that allows them the option to see the impact report if they want to, or if they're just trying to give a quick gift, then it's not a barrier to generosity, right? Uh, so that's essentially the what, and then we'll show you here in the next slide how, unless Leanne, you've got something you want to add. Yeah. So we'll, I think what happens is we'll see a couple of examples of how we can do this, and then we'll see the what. So again, here on the screen are a couple of samples um, with a note from the pastor and the different features. So if you were wanting to use the impact report to cast vision. Oh, right. Yes, that's right. So you do have the ability to, you choose the text that appears here. So you're able to decide what it is. Are we going to put statistics there? Are we going to share what our mission and values are? Um, so you really have a full control over what appears there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let's actually jump back one more slide because I want to call this out. And I don't know that we did in the anywhere else in the deck, but you'll notice on the screenshot with the little girl drinking a glass of water. Um, you'll notice that there are arrows right above the image to click through. So I want to be clear that when you, you can use the impact report on your standard giving form that has multiple funds, mm -hmm. These impact reports are associated with the fund, right? So in this case, it was the clean water fund in this, in this example. And then we've got an image and information about the clean water fund then if your donors wanted to, they could click through and see the other funds and the impact that those funds are having. So want to make sure that we highlight that feature as well, because I think that's super cool that you can have multiple impact reports perform if you've got multiple funds for your donors to choose from. Um, okay, so we can skip back to casting. Great, great call out. So some of you may say, hey, we only have one fund on our form. Great. Set up the impact report for that one fund. Use those little graph icons at the bottom and kind of break it down. But like just um, just mentioned there, say, ooh, but I have different graphs that I want for the missions fund than I do for the outreach fund. Great. You'll be able to swap out those icons based on what fund the donor is giving to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Really quick, I'm going to call out to uh, go, go back, back one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we talked about the state of church giving report um, and 57, well, is this the same one uh, highlighting the church ministry, church impact? Can, okay. Yeah. So I think it was on those stats that we shared at the beginning, but 53% increase in generosity for churches that shared the ministries that highlighted the ministries that they're impacting. And this hits home for me. We have at our church something called the compassion offering. So you've got like your regular ties that you can give. And then you always have the option every Sunday to give to the compassion offering. And what our church will do is like once a month, sometimes twice a month, they talk about generosity every week, but it doesn't, it's not just like, here's an opportunity to give your tithes. Sometimes the, the invitation to give looks like them sharing what ministry the compassion offering impacts. So as a reminder, you can also give to the compassion offering. Here's one of the ministries that we support. It's got, you know, they've got a slide up with a cute face of a kiddo that's getting tutoring at a school right down the street from us. Um, and so that, that hits close to home. It's actually the school that my kids go to. So that hits home for me. And, and it's, um, a reminder that my church takes tithes and offerings, <laughs> but in a way that is relatable and compelling because I know where my money's going and I can see the cute face that it impacts. So just a reminder, share about those ministries. This impact report is a fantastic way to do that. If they're already giving digitally, if they're already landing on this form, present them the opportunity to view the impact report um, and uh, to see some of those ministries that you're impacting. 
And I think that goes straight into use this as visual storytelling. Connect the humanity of the ministry that your um, organization is completing um, with visuals and um, really real examples. So in that bottom right example, exactly what has happened. So maybe that's how many missionaries you're sponsoring, how many trips went out from your organization. Um, and then I do want to call out the that fund progress bar. If you have a really specific dollar amount that you're reaching toward and you're using our pledge feature within the giving platform, you can even show how close you're getting to reaching that goal as a community. Yeah. Let me, I'm going to pause really quick. Um, so the framework that we talked about when we're, when we're, I, as I'm working through this, I'm like, well, I feel like I don't want this to be confusing. So let me call this out. You're going to have a vision framework for your church as a whole. Why does your church exist? Why is it in the community that it's in? And that needs to be crystal clear. And if you only have a general fund, then that is your vision framework for all the things, right? If you are a church that does have additional opportunities to partner, you've got other campaigns that you're doing, then I would recommend that you make a supplementary impact vision um, time or my goodness framework for that ministry so that you can be crystal clear and communicating about that campaign during the life of that campaign. Or if it's an ongoing thing, like I said, my church is doing the tutoring thing. They've got a little vision framework for that. And so they don't have to reference it all the time, but in this case, it does align, you know, the, the teams of the church. And then it, it aligns, um, us, the congregation to know exactly what the, the, what and the, who, and the, when is for that specific campaign. So, um, just want to call that out again. We're going to send you that, uh, framework. framework. <laughs> in your email, use that, use that for your church, get, you know, get everybody aligned there, you know, of your overall mission, if you haven't already, and then you can use it for other smaller campaigns as well. So just felt like I should call that out. Yeah, no, that's a great, great call out. Um, so if we are looking at kind of like all the bells and whistles, so again, this feature um, provides great amount of flexibility. So you can use it in the way that makes the most sense. But this example on screen kind of shows all the bells and whistles. It shows the um, titles you're able to give, adding photos, adding a signature, and including those buckets to show the financial transparency of how um, money is given to that specific fund are utilized. So that's one way to use it. And we're going to go into like some of the detailed how to set up in just a minute, but I want to get through a couple of these other examples. So another option there is if you don't have um, these really hard statistics and numbers to share, calling out the different things that the organization is doing and simply adding that logo at the top and including the signature to really make it feel like it's personal and coming from the leaders of your ministry or organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And, and, you know, in this example to expressing gratitude, thank you is always a, a really easy way to invite additional generosity. Even if on Sunday morning, that's all you say, Hey, as a reminder, your gifts at this church go to X, Y, and Z. And we just want to take a minute to thank you for that. Meanwhile, you've got a QR code on the slide behind you and people are like, Oh, I want to give also, and they have the opportunity right there. And it didn't require you to say, we need your money. They could just scan. You just express gratitude. If it's heartfelt, if it's impactful, if it's specific, it's going to inspire impact. Mm -hmm. So this is the next slide is the what not to do slide, because <laughs> it's, it's, it's easy to, to potentially go in and end up with something like this. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just going to flip back to the previous example because it's the exact same wording. Mm. Um, so if if you go in and turn this on in your program and just type, this is what it will look like. I know that you can put a better foot forward than this. So even if it is adding a logo, 
changing some of the font to bold to call those out, maybe adding bullet points um, and importing a simple signature um, image. So to go from this to this just takes a few extra steps. And I want to encourage you how beneficial those extra steps are because my eye goes to the things that you're calling out, feeding the hungry, caring for the homeless, um, and providing mentorship versus this, I might not even read what's on the side of the page there. Yeah, I'm skipping it. I'm going to skip it. <laughs> we'll, show you, we'll show you how easy it is to add all these things to here in the next slide, I believe. Yes, we are finally getting to the, the details, the nuts and bolts of, okay, I get it. I want to do it. You've inspired me. How do I do it? Yeah, so there's a kind of a two-part setup on this. Uh, as you're creating a fund, or if you already have a general fund, and if that's all you use, or if you have a tithe fund, um, you would just go into the fund manager and there's a, just a button that says add impact report. So you would add the impact report and then it will prompt you to fill in certain fields. Um, and so you can see here on the screenshot that yes, I wanna add the impact report. You're going to um, put your title for the impact report and you can see the screenshot next to it kind of where these things uh, will land, right? On the actual, um, impact report on the form, then you can add a, a little bit of extra fund information, then your image and the, up, the image upload is super easy. Mm -hmm. You're just either drag and drop, or I think you can upload directly on there and then sure, you'll allow the fund to be displayed. And that feature will partner with, you know, our pledge or campaign feature. Uh, and then include a breakdown of how donations are distributed. This is those little pie charts. So you don't have to turn that on. It's just an option for you. Pretty much all of this is optional, right? There's no, no required field. But if you've turned it on, like Leanne said, your best bet is to take advantage of as many of these features as possible so you can raise engagement. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I love that you can change the image and even the title that's appearing there in blue per fund. Mm -hmm, so yeah. that title there in that appears at the very top in blue is kind of determined by what you type in that impact report title as well. And that image that you upload here is going to appear at the top right below that title. So you can really tie that visual to it. All right. So that was step one. So we've turned it on on our form and we've chosen the things that we want to enable on the form, mm -mm, on the fund, fund, on the fund. And now we're going to go to our form. That's right. Yep. So then you'll go into uh, if you've if you've chosen the impact report in the fund manager, then when you come here on your giving form within the form properties, you will see an impact report tab and you can enable it per form. Right. So just because you have an impact report on your uh tithe fund or your general fund doesn't necessarily mean it has to be on every form where you have those funds, right? Um, and so you will enable it per form and then you can choose which funds to show the impact report for. Um, and then you can, this feels like a lot of screenshots, a lot of steps, it's really not. And we do have some really helpful um, articles to show you, but it all it's all within the form properties under impact report. You're going to customize a few of the, the features here. You can put in some verbiage, and this is what shows immediately under the um, image. You, I don't know if we want to hop back, but it's going to show immediately under the, the image. So you can even customize further per form what is on that impact report. But a lot of that stuff is going to pull directly from what you put into the fund information. Yes. And I will, I'm going to add just a little layer of flexibility. So again, if you say, you know what, um, I don't necessarily have a different message for every fund. That's fine. Um, you can go in and enable the um, impact report on the funds and then do one message here on the form. Yeah. Um, and be able to control all the things from here, put in your image here, put in your text here on the form level. And that's then another way to approach it. So you're like, oh, I don't want to, it's the same message for every fund. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Um, I don't feel like you have to go and add that messaging to every single fund, do it on the form instead. Mm -hmm. um, 
And you can even, um, I love calling out here in that bottom right corner that you can save some templates. So you've had your pastor write the letter. It's beautiful. It's perfect. Um, Save it. And then you can use it again on multiple different forms. So you don't have to like try to copy and paste things in and reformat it. You can just save it all here. Yep. Yep. Good call out. I kind of forgot about the template part. That is fantastic. Yeah. I love working smarter um, and not having to remember what I named the file and what folder I saved it in on my computer. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. So those two steps to set up your impact report on your funds and on your form. Super simple. Um, And like Jess said, we have several help articles that will walk you through step by step how to do this for each different example that we showed you earlier. And those links are going to be in our follow up email. So you've gone to all this trouble of not trouble, but all of the work of creating a framework, deciding what you're going to include, where else should be using this. And Jess, do you have another thought before we move on? Well, I, there was a really good question and I was just going to call it out. Yeah, let's I do know it. we're coming close to the hour, but uh, someone asked if this these screenshots look like they're from a computer screen. This is available on mobile as well. Actually, some of the screenshots that showcase the, showcase the impact form are actually in the mobile version. What's the, what that's going to look like is if they choose to see the impact report on their phone, they're looking at the giving form. They have a little I don't know if you guys can see me. I'm sure you can, but there's a little thing that says, show me the impact report. It's going to actually, so on this screen, it shows separately. It's the first screenshot there with the little girl with the, with the water. What it actually does is it shows in front of the form. And then you'll notice there's an X at the top right hand corner, and they can close that out when they're done reading it. So when they click view impact report, it will show, and then it will disappear where they can complete their gift. So it's a little different on a desktop. It slides out on the mobile, it shows in front and then they can close it out. But yes, hundred percent available on mobile. Great, great question. All right. So I want to talk about where else we're going to use this information. So again, you've gotten that letter crafted. Where else are we going to use this? So um, in addition to the church, um, state of church giving report, we had a another white paper that we released end of last year um, talking about year-end giving, but a lot of the information was really impactful. So if we think about um, follow-up after somebody gives, they're going to get an email, couple of call-outs here that um, if we're able to personalize that email, make it look like it comes from a person, um, adopting plain text style, those that did that in this test saw an increase in their open rate um, and an increase in the click-throughs because it looked as if it was coming from a trusted source. And so within your giving platform, you're able to do a lot of personalization. Sorry, go ahead, Leah. No, no, no. You're, I was going to say, and one of the groups that we want to be sure gets thanked because they may not go back to the giving form because they have a recurring gift set up. So they may not see all the beautiful work that you do on the impact report. We want to be sure that you're sharing that with them. So just talk to us a little bit about how we set up this um, recurring email. Yeah. So to Leanne's point, these folks are hopefully getting this email like every week or every month. Um, or annually, those are the three options to set up recurring giving. So they're going to see this on a regular basis. Uh, it is really easy to just put this one on autopilot and never look back. Now you do have the option to do that. We would encourage you not to do that. Um, but you can go into your, in within the settings menu, uh, there is an email template tile and these emails are going to come out of the platform anytime a gift get, or excuse me, anytime a donor gives a recurring gift, there's also other emails that get triggered out. We're going to just focus on the recurring receipt right now. Um, but you can fully customize that same way as the impact report. Um, we encourage you to mimic some of the messaging there. Uh, definitely, definitely a huge opportunity to express gratitude, you know, um, but you can come back to that and, and update it regularly. So in, For example, like if you're, if someone has set up a recurring gift for a specific campaign, including progress on that campaign over the life of the campaign would be a fantastic way to do that. And if people know that that email is changing, if the subject line has changed, or if, um, I don't know, if you're telling them, hey, we're going to update you via your 
confirmation email, um, be sure to read those, then what a cool opportunity to continue to communicate your vision framework and your impact in whatever that campaign is, or if it's just your church, we really encourage you to go back and change that and customize that as much as you can. Absolutely. And I've, I know I've flipped back and forth through a couple of slides here as you were talking. Um, in the from line, drop in the a person's email from your ministry. Make that look personal. It's it's a quick change that you can do. Um, and then, like Jess said, change that subject line. I know that I have some recurring giving set up and the subject line never changes. And I just know, oh, that came through. But we can really begin to treat this as more than just a receipt. This is more than just a transaction. And this is your opportunity to really personalize that. And along with our recurring givers, we have those that are coming in and making a one-time gift. And I yeah. think just the same things that you said apply here updating this message regularly. Mm -hmm, 100%. Two, this is just a great uh, way to acknowledge this step of obedience, right? So if if they're not on recurring gifts and if it is a one-time gift, maybe that's what they do every time. Maybe they're not aware that recurring is an option. You should tell them. Totally. But if this is their first time giving, then celebrate that with them. What a cool step of obedience. Um, and definitely more than a receipt, right? This is, should be a celebration. So treat it as so you have the option to, you know, we've got the two, the two email screenshots that we are showing here are kind of templated, but you really even have the option to customize, especially this one time receipt. You can customize this a lot more. You can add a different image, uh, you can add some links into the email. So please, please take a look at that feature and take advantage of it. Yeah. And for the one-time givers, this email is formatted under your form properties. Um, so I saw a question about, hey, could we have a different message per fund? Um, a lot of that's going to be driven by the form that they're giving through. So it depends on some of your setup. Um, so there are some options for that for sure. The other thing that I want to encourage you to take care of, and this is kind of like an overlooked thing in the setup, in my opinion, coming from some years of coaching folks, um, is that you can actually even control the completion screen and add a logo, a message, a video link. Once they've completed that gift, you control that thank you screen. Um, again, it's under the form properties, under the submission tab, but I encourage you to really consider how that immediate reminder of the donor's impact of their gift can be customized. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at that. Yeah, that's such a good reminder. Yeah, I love that. And also on that same, um, on that same tab, we have a feature that we rolled out kind of quiet last year that was called More Ways to Give. Um, so just you want to tell us a little bit about how More Ways to Give works. Yeah, I'm going to start talking a little faster because I get yep. carried away because I get excited. This is basically a way for you to showcase other giving forms. In short, that's what it is. Uh, it'll allow you to just like this, like the screenshot shows, there's a button right there that can select if there's another ministry or giving form that they want to give towards. They can click on that here. You get to control which forms show and which ones don't show. And so, um, in, in the research that we did with Next After, who is one of our partners, 25% of those donors that saw this screen chose to take another step of generosity because they saw that option immediately. So keep that in mind. This is a great feature, super easy to turn on, and you can just plug and play the forms that you want to showcase here. Absolutely. And the setup of that, um, again, is under the form properties tab. We're not going to go deep into it, but that you're able just to quickly click enable and choose the other options um, from that drop down list to turn that on. Um, and Jess, you called this out earlier. Sometimes we have folks who are just um, unaware. Unaware. They they don't know um, that they could even turn on a recurring gift. And so, I want to talk a little bit about that prompt. Yeah. So uh, this one is in the payment. So all of most of these form features, actually all of them are going to live within form. So the only thing you'll do for, is in the funds is the impact report, um, but everything else is going to live within the form. And most of the things that we're showing you are, are going to live in the form property. So mm -hmm. uh, 
pretty easy to find. But under the payment tab, you do have the option to set up a recurring prompt. This has been around for a while and you get to decide how often folks see that prompt. Do we want them to see it after every single gift? Do we want them to see it every three? Whatever you choose, it's a real simple, low key way to remind them that they can make their gift recurring. It's going to show up similar to this. Uh, we do have a the express giving form, it's going to show a little bit different, but otherwise it's going to show like this, make my gift recurring. And then it's going to take them through choosing their frequencies for their gift um, and the amount and the fund. And then their gift is set to recurring. So definitely something you should be communicating from the pulpit, but also if they just forgot or didn't know that that was an option, you can turn on this prompt and it's just a gentle reminder. All right. And then one other recent release about um, the option to increase your, your gift. Turned on in the same spot, mm -hmm. um, but it gives those givers who are kind of just used to doing a the same amount over and over just that question. And you, again, can control how that's worded. So if you're tying that back to your mission or your framework um, of would you like to support tutoring efforts at this elementary school and being sure that you're tying that ask to mm -hmm. something very specific within your framework um, is even more powerful. Yeah. And you do get to control the percentages on there. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we did percentages because it's going to tie right back to their donation amount. Yeah. And again, on the, um, form properties, so you can choose this form by form. So you might say on my everyday form, not going to do that, but I have a special event form and I would like to include it. So that's your flexibility and you choose how you present these generosity opportunities to your donors. All right. And we talked a little bit earlier today about different generations of giving. Um, want to talk just a touch about one of the features that we've added recently um, of stock and crypto. Just talk to me about cryptocurrency. Catch me up to speed. Yeah, well, full disclosure, I don't know a ton about cryptocurrency, but I do know that we can accept it through our partnership with the Giving Block. Um, they have been phenomenal to work with, uh, and this integration is going to continue to improve. But right now, it's super duper simple. If you would like to add stock and crypto as an option for your donors, this one's not quite as easy to just turn on for your protection. This one's going to require some help from our team. So if that's something that you're interested in, you are welcome to um, chat. If you'd like, uh, you can you can just let us know in the Q&A or in the chat that that's something that you're interested in. We do have an article that we can send to you uh, where you can essentially just let us know that you're interested. Raise your hand. Our team will reach out to you and help you facilitate um, adding that to your giving form. But yeah, it looks super sleek. Uh, it's going to be exactly what it shows here in these screenshots. It's going to add a button at the top of your form, um, and then they would essentially be redirected to the Giving Block web giving blocks website. This integration will continue to improve, but right now we wanted to make this available to our clients as soon as possible, our churches as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, over since 2020, this is not applicable to ministry brands giving, but in general, a uh, cryptocurrency generosity has increased by 1,558%. That is a lot. People are using this. People are donating through crypto. So if you want to be relevant, we encourage you to add this to your giving forum. So let us know if that's something you're interested in finding more, uh, find, finding out more about. Absolutely. And then kind of, um, the other portion of that stock giving, if your ministry has ever received a gift of stock, you know all of the steps involved in that. If you've never had the opportunity to receive a gift of stock, um, you might not realize how many steps are involved and how many different parties. Um, our partnership with the Giving Block actually streamlines this um, to make it so simple. Like it, it removes some paper forms and some back and forth communication between multiple parties into a pretty seamless um, experience for the donor to transfer that um, and have it liquidated and sent to your organization. Um, so again, in the follow-up email, there'll actually be a video that highlights 
the steps without and the steps with. So you can really see um, how smooth this can make giving for all of the generations, regardless of kind of where they are in their lifespan of generosity, um, providing them the ability to pay with different methods um, is so key to fostering that community of generosity. All right. I know that we have gone a little bit over on our time today, but you get Jess and I in a room talking about generosity and it's just, it's just going to go long. It just is. <laughs> So yes, this was recorded. You are gonna receive a link to the recording of this webinar in the follow-up emails. Um, like I said, there's also gonna be some links to some of the resources that we mentioned today about the State of Church Giving um, report and the Stock and Crypto um, video. What you're also gonna get that we've referenced several times is that worksheet for you to work through creating your um, vision framework. We're also going to include some um, graphics. Some of you guys might be like me and are graphically challenged. Um, some of the graphics that we used in our samples were um, from our uh, Ministry Brands platform, ShareFaith. And so we're going to give you a few of those for free. Um, and also all of the verbiage that we used in our examples. We're going to give that to you in a Word document so you can just take out our bold, bolded words and put in your bolded words um, for what your ministry is doing to make it just as easy for you guys to get that up and going. And there'll be links in that email to the how-to articles that will walk you through step-by-step step how to build um, your impact reports within um, the product you have with us. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one.